Hello fellow coaches, this is Quez World TV coming back at you with another tutorial video on advanced play for Stratomatic Basketball. One of my previous videos, I talked about the deck flow of the 60 card uh, advanced action deck um, when you're playing a quarter of uh, the advanced version of Stratomatic Basketball. Um, that video was very minimal. It was just to show you what, what kind of things you were looking at on the action deck, things like that. Uh, what I wanted to do was go actually into almost a standard game. Um, I'm not going to be taking, um, I'm not going to be taking down stats. Um, I'm just going to be talking to you about what is actually occurring. So, you know, XYZ player passes to XYZ player and they make the basket. Oh, no, they missed the basket. We have to look for a rebound. Oh, um, you know, we got to look on the opponent's defensive card. We have to look on the team defensive card and so on and so forth. And just how the action deck flows throughout the game. Um, so you can get a better understanding on what you're doing when you're flipping, where you're going to be looking at, um, and so on and so forth. So um, right now, as you can see here, um, I set up two teams. I just picked two teams, 2003-2004 uh, New Jersey Nets. Uh, they are the visiting team, and they're visiting the Washington Bullets of 94-95. Um, I own various, various different teams. I'm not an owner of um, of uh, complete seasons. I have individual teams that, you know, throw, throughout the you know, my time watching uh, basketball, um, and I fell in love with a lot of these teams. Um, so I have a number of individual teams, and I just happened to uh, pick these two different teams uh, just to show you for this video. Um, so again, we have the New Jersey Nets, 2004, uh, versus the 95 Washington Bullets. They're both in a normal set. Uh, I should say normal defense, and uh, let's begin. So basically what you're going to do, as you know, oh, I'll, just to give you some insight on, you know, who's where. We have the five players, five players. Uh, right now for the Bullets, who are the home team, I have two people that are set up inside, um, my left forward and my center, whereas the New Jersey Nets, I only have my center right now set up inside. But I do have two inside block men set up as well. Um, as you can see here, I just basically used the little game pieces just to represent what's going on. So this is for ins inside position, um, positioned inside, and this is my inside block man representation. All right, so basically what we're going to do, we're going to take, to start off a game, we're going to roll. I rolled snake eyes. You're going to be looking on the game board, and this, this box right here tells you the, the jump ball results. And uh, two is the home team. So that means Washington Bullets um, got the ball, and we're going to flip our first card. Okay. As you guys already know, you're always going to be looking at control first. First, always at the tip. It's a normal play. In this case, it says left guard, pass to right forward. As we already know, we have to flip the next card to get the number at the bottom of the next action deck to figure out what is actually occurring on that pass. So right now, and I'm sorry, just trying to get this in. All righty. Left guard is going to be, in this case, is going to be, we said the home team. So it's Rex Chapman uh, to uh, Calbert Chaney. It's a 12 at the bottom left-hand corner. We're going to get Rex Chapman's card. And we're going to be looking at normal passing 12. It says position shot. Okay, so Rex Chapman passes to Calvert Cheney for position shot. And in this case, because it is a dot at the end of it, and let me show you that again, it says there's a dot right there. See the dot where it says position shot? And there's also one over here. Okay, that means that the player themselves, okay, can only take an outside or an inside shot depending on what their position what their position is. Okay, so in this case, um, Calvert Cheney is positioned outside. He can only take an outside shot. We're gonna roll. I rolled a blank four. I'm sorry, I'm trying to see that. There you go, blank four. 
All right, I'm going to get Calvert Cheney's card. Blank four on his card is a miss. It's a blank on the four. So that means that there's a rebound possibility. It says rebound, offensive center one, if not defensive center. So we're going to go to the offensive center, which is uh, Chris Weber. Chris Weber is a rated as a two. That is more than the, the requirement as an offensive a rebound for a center one. So that means Chris Weber gets the rebound and it's an open shot. What I like to do is I have a special rule, a house rule for myself, because I do play a lot of solitary, a lot of solo play. Um, if the guy is positioned inside, he only takes an inside shot. If he's positioned outside, then I do a special role to decide based on his shooting tendencies on what he's taking. But think about it. Let's just say... Um, you know, a shot was taken from the outside and it could be it hits the back of the rim and it bounces all the way to the three point line uh, could hit the rim and it bounces right there, right underneath the basket. Um, it could be that, uh, let's say, Chris Rubber. Uh, well, in this case, he's positioned inside, but let's just say it's one of the guards and they were happen to be running towards the basket. And as they're running towards the basket, they grab the rebound and they keep going to the basket. So it could also be a penetration shot. So I have special rules. Uh, myself that I use to, you know, just bring the, the game alive a little bit instead of just taking in a, a particular shot, like an, it's an outside shot or it's an inside shot. Well, listen, there's different plays to to basketball. Okay, so in this case, Chris Weber got the ball right because he took a, a he got the offensive rebound, but he's positioned inside, so he's just going to take an open rebound shot underneath inside. I'm going to roll. That was a. D8, as we know, the D stands for defensive team card. Eight, it's an inside shot. Bullets, have we have to look at the defensive card of the um, visiting team because uh, Chris Weber is on the bullets. We're looking at inside column, and it's an eight. We're going to go down here. Oh, it's an O. That means because it was an open shot, the O stands for made bucket. Okay, so right now, Chris Weber put it back. Uh, it's now 2 nothing bullets. Control goes to New Jersey as a visiting team. We don't flip the card until we look at the control of the last discarded card. In this case, it says right guard pass to any player for position shot. Flip next card. Right guard to anyone. Right now, we got Jason Kidd in the game for New Jersey Nets 2004. And he's going to pass to anyone. You know what? We're going to go to Richard Jefferson. Um, Jason Kidd or Richard Jefferson, we have to look at, which we flipped already, we're going to look at the number, get Jason Kidd's card here, passing, and it was a three, as you can see from the last card there, three at the bottom left-hand corner, Jason Kidd, Bayou, that's another word I use a lot, guys. Uh, two to fourteen, uh, dazzled. That means uh, he passed to Richard Jefferson, possibly on the break, possibly on the w uh, on the uh, wing, and Richard Jefferson threw it down. Let's say he did a nice reverse layup or something. But it was a, a, a beautiful pass from Jason Kidd to Jefferson. You would score that on your score sheet as an assist and a made basket. Right now, the score is two two, tied up with the Washington Bullets taking it out of bounds and taking control. Last discarded card we always look at. It says here, normal control right guard. Anytime, as you can see here, even though it doesn't say flip or anything else, you always have to flip the next card. That's how the action deck keeps flowing so we can get down into time and play the quarters. Um, right guard, we're going to flip. Bullets have the ball. They are home. So right guard has the ball. And it says here for the home team, outside shot only for player positioned outside. Inside shot only for player positioned inside. So basically, it's either an outside shot only or an inside shot for that right guard. In this case, our right guard is Scott Stiles. Scott Stiles has the ball. He's going to take an outside shot because he is positioned outside right now. And he can only take an outside shot because it says only here. So we're going to roll. I rolled a real quick. I did a blank 11. So we know that the blank stands for player's card, Scott Styles outside shot. We're going to go down to an 11. Oh, it says here, 
X dash one through six. So that means this is going to be a good shot if the last discarded card has a one through six at the bottom left hand corner. No, it does not. It says 16. So that means this shot is going to be a miss with a rebound occurring. So now we look at the last discarded card. The first rebound of uh, the first reading on the rebound says defensive right forward. That means our dude Richard Jefferson, who's playing right forward, automatically grabs the rebound. Now, if you're ever playing in a fast break offense, this would be where the fast break offense would start. Okay, after any missed field goal, remember that, miss field goal, not a foul shot. Miss field goal, the fast break would the fast break offense would occur if that team is in the in a fast break where you would start looking at control on the fast break. But in this case, the Nets are not in a fast break offense. They're on their a normal control. So last discarded card because Jefferson grabbed the rebound. It says right forward pass to any player for position shot. Flip next card. So Jefferson now grabbed his rebound, right? He came. To, he's coming down with the ball because he's the right. He's the right forward. We're gonna flip here. Look at that number here, sixteen to Jefferson, who's playing right forward. We're gonna take his card. We're gonna look on the passing. It says here twelve to twenty position shot with a dot. So now I'm gonna pass to. You know what? I'm going to pass to, uh, it's going to go to Jason Kidd. So right, uh, Richard Jefferson, right? Right forward pass to any player for position shot. So uh, Jefferson is going to Jason Kidd. We looked at his number at the bottom. It said position shot. Now, Jason Kidd, right? He has, he is positioned outside. And his, again, um, I think in the beginning of the video, I think I may mention it is that I do a um, house rules. Uh, one of the house rules, which is actually technically not a house rule, there is, it is actually in the Stratomatic book. Based on sh the shot tendency here, okay, the stars and the eye. Um, when I play solo, I do use that advanced rule on playing solitary, pl playing solo, and I use the six sided die. So I'll go real quick through the stars. A one star, right, stands for he's strictly an outside shooter. Two stars, he's an outside shooter more than he is a penetrating shooter, but he can take penetrating shots. Three stars, he's equally balanced outside and penetration. Four stars, in this case, he mostly penetrates, but he does take outside shots. If you have five stars... Five stars is strictly a penetration shooter, and he does not take outside shots. And then the I stands for that he can be positioned inside. Then sometimes you see that there's a double reading, stars and the I. In this case, he's a penetrating shooter that takes some outside shots, but he also can be positioned inside. So this is what I like to do. First and foremost, he's positioned outside. So even though he has an I here, I disregard that because he's positioned outside normally okay so now i just look at the actual penetrate the actual stars here the rule is stratomatic is if you roll your six-sided die and if it's equal or less than the number of stars there the player penetrates if it's more than the stars then he takes an outside shot um in this case it does say that richard jefferson was passing to jason kidd for a position shot He's positioned outside, but he's able to take penetration shots as well. So that's when I roll the die. I rolled a one in this case. I rolled a one, right? So that means it's e equal or less than. He could. He takes a penetrating shot in this case. I'm going to roll. I'm going to move this over. All right. I rolled the blank nine. Since he's taking a position shot, I'm going to go down. Look at P for position. I'm penetrating, and it says BL. The BL stands for that it's an automatic miss shot, but you want to, that if you're playing with block ratings, you would have to see your inside block man. In this case, it would be Chris Weber, and see if it's blocked instead of just being a miss shot. So Chris Weber is block rating of one to eight. You would then look at the last discarded card, 
for the number. It says 16. It does not fall in his block rating. So that means it's just a missed shot. If it was in between the 1 to 8, then that would have been also a block shot, and you would have taken that down on your scorecard. So right now, uh, uh, Jason K was running way too fast down the line. He got the ball. He flipped it up. It's a, it, it was a miss. And it says now for rebounding, the first thing, defensive center. So that means Chris Weber got the ball. It is now control to Washington Bullets. Washington Bullets got the ball. The left guard, which is going to be Rex Chapman, is coming down with the ball. You flip the next card. Remember, single position. You got to flip the next card to go to one of the two tops. Right now, Washington is home. It's a replay. Three replays in a row, just to remind you guys, is a 24-second violation. So any combination of three straight replays, it is a 24-second 24 via, 24, uh, violation. So this is the first replay. You get a replay. Basically, the play broke down. They're bringing it back up top and resetting. You go to the last discarded card. Control is center. Chris Weber got the ball. Again, you got a flip. Home team, because the bullets are home. Opponent defense, 26 for the center. Chris Weber is being guarded by Kenyon Martin. Kenyon Martin on his defensive column here says 26. And it says 21 to 26 is a steal. Oh, man. That's great. Kenyon Martin uh, stole the ball. And I wanted to explain that to you. There are two columns. One passing and one defense on the defensive card, right? If you get a stolen in the passing, it would just be an automatic just steal and you get control of that team for that team. If it's a steal in the defensive column, you have two choices. You can either do control where you go to the last discarded card or you can have the player who made the who made this, you know, the steal. He can take a fast break shot by going to the basket. So let's do that. So again, Chris Weber got the ball. He came down. Opponent defense 26. Kenya Martin uh, is looking on his defensive card. It says he is steal for 26. We decided that he's going to take a fast break shot. We're going to roll. I rolled a D7. Kenya Martin's coming down against Washington's defense because remember the D stands for the defensive card. We're going to look on the fast break. I rolled a seven. Fast break seven is an X. That means Kenya Martin came down and he either laid it up or he dunked it and it was good. Right now, the score is now 4-2 New Jersey Nets and we keep going. So that's the different, that's how the, the game flow is. You're going to keep flipping cards, keep flipping cards, keep flipping cards and going through the various different information on the card until you complete the 60 card deck. Once you complete a 60 card deck, the quarter is over and you got to do that four separate times to, to complete a game in regulation. Um, any overtime period consists of 25 cards for a three minute quarter and you still use these cards 10 minutes six minutes well but in um overtime you're only going to be doing it for three minutes so you do a you know you're only going to use a let's say a one minute card with like 10 cards left um but that's how the the game is flowed so um as you can see here this is how you set everything up um sorry for the uh out of focus if it ever came up but if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask them in the comments. Have a great day, guys, to the next video.